Hello everyone. Today is another Blender day. We're going to make the pilot for our mech so that we can get out and walk around. Um, I don't actually know whether we're going to actually integrate that, but I just learned a new method that replaces box modeling, so basically I'm eager to do this model and I figured I would go ahead and do it on screen with you. Uh, and I have the, the screencast keys turned on. Woohoo! So you can actually see what I'm doing. So this method is a uh, is not the same as box modeling, but it has many. It has the same basic mesh result, which means that you can get some. It's it's much faster and much easier to use. And it's the skin method, and if you have any interest in modeling, you know creatures, um, then this is probably something you want. So I've gone ahead and I've added in our pilot, and you can see that our pilot is just this uh, lady in a in a uh, space suit that looks slightly futuristic. I'm not confident about the side view because she's got this heavy backpack on, so she has to lean forward awkwardly. I may adjust that somehow, but I haven't figured out how yet. Um, but in essence, uh, this is already set up for us to start modeling, so that's what we're going to do. We need to actually add in... It's not W? What is it? No, it's M. No, I don't remember what it is. Don't have all the keys memorized. And we're going to add a mesh. <laughs> Um, there's actually a lot of options as to, how, as to how to do this, but we're just going to go ahead and uh, create this mesh here. And the reason that um, that it's a little bit awkward is because we don't actually need a mesh. The skin thing doesn't work with a mesh, it works with a line. So we need to make a line. So to do that, I'm actually going to go ahead and first extrude this mesh. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into, line, into point edit mode and I'm going to merge the points together. Um, so not alt, alt M, there it is at center and again at center and that just gives us two per two vertexes two vertices and um, one line so we need to add some modifiers here the first modifier we need is a mirror modifier on the x-axis the next modifier we need is the skin modifier and you can see that that created a box around our line and that's exactly what we're going to be using to actually do this modeling. So you can see it has the same basic result as box modeling, but it's much more nimble and useful. Uh, and it always produces quads. We're also going to go ahead and add in a subdivision surface. Um, we're going to leave it at one for the moment. We'll bounce we'll pun we'll punch it up later. So the real problem that I have with uh, with this modeling is that I can't get it to um, to do an X-ray mode, which would be really, really nice and it's bizarre to me that it doesn't allow you to. Um, yeah, there's no no apparent x-ray mode option. How sad, which means that you do have to work in this line mode, I mean the, the uh, you know, press Z to enter in into the see-through. Um, I just forgot the name. The mesh with no textures or faces. I'm totally blanking. You know what it is, this, this mode here. <laughs> All right, so we need to go ahead and start to model this. So we're going to go ahead and just drag these points into roughly good spots like this. Uh, you can see that we're not um, arranged dead straight with our mesh, but that's OK. We'll live with that. Uh, so we got a lot of things here. Actually, we don't want to have the head in it just yet. we got a lot of things here that we have to start to do. Um, one of these is obviously the arms, so let's go ahead and extrude some arms. And you can see that it just automatically um, works. Now there are a lot of gotchas with this because we have a lot of modifiers applied, and if we apply them in the wrong order, we get very different results. So let's go ahead and make it so that these shoulders are in roughly the right spot. Uh, and then we're going to extrude out again to the elbows, and then extrude out again to the wrist. You can see that this is much too fat. Now you can actually scale these down by hitting Control A and then moving the mouse. I'm not actually sure if there's a non-hotkey way to do that. I can't find one. Um, so if you do this, you're going to have to remember that Control A is an important hotkey. And of course we can scale things up too. So now let's go ahead and do the legs. So we're going to extrude out to the hips like so. And then we're going to go ahead and extrude down to the knees and then down to the ankles. And you can see that the red circle is around this node and we don't want it around that node. We want it around the pelvis node. So we're going to go ahead and mark the pelvis node as root again. 
but this is a rather awkward hip to have so let's go ahead and just adjust it by uh, control A and scale this up but move it so that it makes sense but you can see that it's given us a rather dumpy um, crotch so we got a lot of options as to how we want to deal with that and one of them is to scale this down a little bit and scale this down a little bit and you can see that we can get a crotch going uh, at, at whatever rate we need but the but this is always going to be a little bit awkward the key to building a crotch in this mode is that you need to have um, some quads running through the area and you can see that we have this diamond here and that's no good we don't want a diamond so we need to keep adjusting until we've got quads like that now this is obviously far too wide a gap but that's okay we can always adjust it later on when we convert this into a proper mesh uh, it's easier to to uh, bring those together instead of trying to create a topology so it's okay that it's a little bit wide let's go ahead and adjust the knee and the ankle but you can see that gives us this awkward shape where it's not uh, it's just a straight line so let's go ahead and select the leg and just subdivide it Bonk. and we can grab the center ones and control a and expand it and down here, control A, expand it. And of course, it's not in the right spot, is it? There it is. And that gives us something similar to what we need. Uh, now, we haven't been working on the uh, profile view at all, so let's go ahead and do a little bit of work there. And we can drag these back. And we can drag this back a little bit. And here is where things get a little bit sticky because we have to decide what we're going to do about the hips uh, and, and, more particularly, the way that they interact with the butt. Um, the easiest way to do this is to actually extrude another point uh, along the y-axis to create a butt. But you can see this gives us a lot of really, really awkward shapes. And if, unless you're building an, an EVA, this is not a shape you want. Well, that's actually okay, because we can take this point here and we can say mark loose, and it didn't work. Why didn't you work? Damn it. That should have worked. Why didn't you work? Maybe I have to mark this one loose? What is it that I have to mark loose? Mark loose doesn't appear to be working these days. I swear I did this before. Did I do it slightly differently? Oh, well, whatever. Let's go ahead and leave that for a little bit. An unsolved mystery. For now, we'll just... Oh, wait, we can't scale it up uh, on the x-axis, because you can see that even just by moving it, we've already lost our nice quads. So we've got to keep adjusting and keep these quads intact, uh, even though they don't look quite right. But we can scale it, Alt-A, we can scale it on different axes. So for example, if we hit Y, we'll scale it on just the Y axis. Oh, that didn't work. What did I just do? Did I hit E? I meant to hit... Yeah. So we can hit Y and scale it on just the Y axis. Um, sorry, I was trying to turn to side view which allows us to, oh, y isn't the right axis, x. Uh, since it's local, you get very different axes depending on uh, exactly the rotation of your joints. There. there you go. So let's go ahead and fix up the arms a little bit more. We've got this elbow, but it's not in quite the right spot. So let's go ahead and scale it down. Oh, control A, not Alt A. That's probably the whole problem I've been having. Subdivide everything, move this. Scale it up. That's actually the right size, but the shoulder's too large, so Control A, scale it down, move it up. That actually doesn't look too bad. I kind of expected to have to fuss with the shoulder quite a lot, but it actually seems pretty decent. We've got some awkward, awkward shit going on right here, though. Those aren't those aren't very good loops. Um, so to fix that, let's go ahead and subdivide here. And you can see that that gives us nice clear loops. Just to show you that, uh, again, take a quick look at this part of the shoulder right here. Undo it. You can see how it's got this awkward shape to it. And that shape might be nice um, for uh, later when we're actually trying to build topology because it's more or less the right shape. But it's bad in terms of loops. So when we subdivide it, you can see how it becomes much, much neater. But, of course, we lose the, uh, the exact profile. No longer looks correct. That's okay, we can always just drag things around as we need to, but I'm dragging the wrong thing. Drag this around as we need to. 
There we go. We don't want to lose that nice topology, so I don't want to accidentally screw that up. Um, but this is too large a shoulder, so let's scale it down. And you can see that we did get some weird topology again. So it looks like it's a problem that might be a little bit difficult to solve because we're scaling uh, all of our points so aggressively. Well, let's go ahead and create a neck because that might actually save our, it might actually change what our problem is. So the neck needs to be quite small. I'm going to extrude up and quite small, small, there we are. And then we want to create a head, so let's go ahead and look at the side view for this. You can see that we've started to drift again, so let's go ahead and grab all of this stuff and move it forward. Uh, not that far forward, there, like that. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and extrude up, but this needs to be quite large because it's a head. And move it like this, there we go. Um, except we're, we're really extruding a head here, but we don't want to. Uh, I've been kind of saying head, 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 but the whole point of this shape that I've put around the character is that this is going to be the bubble. The character's head is actually going to be a separate mesh, and therefore we can put in any head that we would like. Uh, that will allow us to let the player customize their head to some extent. So even though I've created all of these to be small, 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 I actually need them to be large, large, large. So let's go ahead and delete those vertexes, vertices. And uh, this neck needs to be large. Uh, Control-A, there we are, rather than small. But you can see that we've got this awkward shape forming here. So let's go ahead and um, move this forward and down, and then extrude from that and scale that up. like so, and then extrude that up like so, uh, and then we're going to go ahead and start to massage it so that it interfaces correctly with the rest of the torso. So we've got this really tiny, this really tiny um, neck type shape which we want to get rid of. Uh, so something like that might be perfect. Um, and uh, we've got this chest shape has become a little bit sunken. We don't want our character to be quite that um, small. So we'll give her a little bit of uh, breadth to her shoulders and her uh, torso. But now we've got this really, really awful uh, loop cut. So we want to make sure to try and keep that straight. It's OK if the dimensions aren't perfect, because we can always adjust the dimensions later but we can't adjust the loops later, at least not without a lot of effort. So that's more or less the shape we would like. Now you can actually build hands uh, in this mode, um, but we don't need, uh, well, we might We might go ahead and do that. We might, we might build some hands depending on how I feel. But we do want feet, so let's go ahead and extrude some feet down. So the secret to feet is that um, you need to actually have the heel be its own thing like this and then the rest of the foot be its own thing like this. And then we'll just scale this foot down on the y-axis, uh, z-axis. Um, okay, that's probably scaled down but not showing. Subdivide, there we go. Do I want to scale on a different axis? X, no? Y? Y. It was Y after all. Uh, it's local axes, so sometimes it's quite screwy. Now you can see that our actual foot topology is a little bit bad here. Um, and that can be fixed a little bit by just adjusting things. Um, but we're gonna have to we're gonna have to be uh, a little bit more careful when we actually do the mesh itself and adjust these things. The important thing is how is this loop cut situation? And you can see that we've got some pretty awkward loop cuts here. Um, these actually aren't too awkward. They look awkward at first glance, but they are contiguous. Um, oh, that's bad. These kind of diamonds never work out. So we do want to adjust this until we get a loop that doesn't suck. There we go. So you can see that we now have a very definite heel that looks really unnatural, but that's okay because we're going to be adjusting that uh, later on when we actually turn it into a mesh. 
So we've got more or less all of the stuff we need to do in this mode. And that means that we can actually apply it. So we're just going to do a one over, a quick one over to look for the remaining pieces. Um, we have a lot of options here as to when we want to add in the backpack. Oh, of course, I've completely forgot about the spine. Um, so we actually want to subdivide that uh, twice rather than once. Um, where is it? There it is. There. And we'll bring this one forward quite a bit and scale it down. We'll bring this one forward quite a bit. And as you can see, that looks just about perfect. And it preserved some decent loops, but we got some nasty shit going on right here. That diamond is no good. Well, I don't think we'll be able to rescue that diamond. I'm very familiar with that diamond. It's the bane of everyone who tries to do hips with box modeling, and it's still the bane of everyone who tries to do hips with this. Now, we can add some more topology for the backpack if we would like. Let's go ahead and do that. That's what I meant to do. There we go. Hmm. That's not quite right, but it actually looks kind of cool. So let's go ahead and scale this up on the x-axis. Oops, sorry, not scale. Control A it up on the x-axis. Because it's far too small. Oh, come on. Control A X. Big. Big. There we go. Control A. Just bigger in general for you. No, nope, you don't want you don't want to get any bigger. That's all the larger you care to be. We've got this really, really nasty situation brewing here, so what can we do to solve that? I think we want to delete this and pull this down. Um so I've created a loop here, but I think that that might have been a mistake. So let's go ahead and delete this vertex. Uh, so we can always adjust this later. I always press Control S. I don't know why it's not Control S. Well, whatever. So this does need to be subdivided here, and we're going to actually scale this down. There we go. That'll leave our mesh relatively undamaged by the nature of the backpack. And we're just going to go ahead and we have a lot of options here. The backpack does connect around the hips here. In fact, that's the, m most of the mechanics that you see here are for backpack support. But we'll go ahead and add that in later on. We're not going to add that in now. Uh, however, we did end up with a backpack that's far too wide, so we'll scale it down on the x-axis. There we are. And then scale this up on the x-axis. There we are. That's more like it. All right, so that is how it worked out. And in the next episode, I'm going to go ahead and take this into a into an actual mesh and finish off with some of the detail work, um, finish off the topology. Look forward to it.